Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Well, God has brought us a beautiful day. The sun's shining outside. The temperatures feel nice. Um, so He's given us a beautiful, beautiful day to start this new year off. Um, I kind of always seem to, God always kind of gives me a theme as, as to what um, He's put on my heart for this year. Last year, my word was faith. And of course, we've got to continue to have faith no matter what. I, I consider and change the theme all I want to, but we've got to continue to have faith in God. Amen. Um, but one of the key things to me to helping other people, to helping our brothers and sisters who are lost in the world today, and to continue to support one another is love. Amen. And we're going to be in John chapter 1. Uh, I think we're going to go probably through verse 18 or just wherever the Holy Spirit leads. Um, but that's the one thing that I have, have found to be the key is no matter you know what, what walk or talk somebody is of life, what, what age or race, um, you know, whatever decisions they're making, you may not be thinking that they're good or this, that, or the other, but the bottom line is, only God knows the hearts and minds of His children. Amen. Now, are you going to get further with somebody by being in their face, or are you going to be? Are you going to get more somewhere with them by loving them? Um, you know, we've we've got a bunch of different things going on in our lives, and and I always say, hate the sin, but love the sinner. That's right. I mean, if that door back there is open to anybody that wants to walk through Amen. it. Amen. They're coming into this house to be loved yes. and to worship God. Now, what profound love did Jesus Christ have for us? There is no greater love, you've heard me say it before, than a man that is willing to lay his life down for the people that he loves. Yes. Um, it's, it's so amazing to me. Of course, we do a lot of different platforms and online ministries. And uh, people that I've never met in my life. And of course I tell them I love them and I pray with them and I counsel with them. And the, the most amazing thing to me about it is I know they're good people just you know, from talking to them. They said no, that they may not necessarily be a Christian. And their content has nothing to do with Christianity even though they're watching our content. But I see through that love over time they start <laughs> saying amen and praise God. And then they start posting more godly things. Yes. Amen. And it is because I love them. And it's because of my profound love for God. And, you know, to me, there's no reason why there should be a seat left in this house. Come on. Right. Um, because I know, and you know, this is a very unique place. And I say that is because when people come here, if you don't feel love, there's something wrong with you. <laughs> Because you're going to find love in this house. And, and there's no reason for every seat in this house not to be filled today because there's not one person out in the world that's not looking for a place like this. And we need to love our brothers and sisters. And we need to have compassion on them. You may not agree with the way they're living their life or what they're doing. You may not exactly get along with them the greatest in the world. But at the end of the day, they're God's children. That's right. And they are our brothers and sisters. Yes. How many times have you seen the transformation of a person once they've got to know Christ and, and, and come into the fellowship of God? The transformation that that has on a person. Um, I think it's uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, I knew I was going to do that. Well, I got to start off the new year with, that, with having a, yeah, going blank there. Um, <laughs> but, uh, it's just talking about that when somebody is in Christ like that, they become a new person. And, and they do. I mean, I'm not the same person today that I was 10 years ago. I've grown and I've evolved because God loved me enough to see me through some very hard times in my life. And uh, because of that love, I feel the same love for y'all. I feel the same love for my brothers and sisters in the world. Um, Jerry did a lesson this morning. Um... Where these, where these three friends had carried their, their friend and they couldn't get to Jesus to be healed. So what did they do? They made a way. Amen. They made a way and they took him upon the rooftop and they lowered him down. 
And yes, that took tremendous faith. But what I've got from the story was is love. I mean, they loved Him enough. They had the faith that Jesus Christ could heal that person and they made a way to make it happen. Uh, my question would be, what if it was three strangers and that same person was laying outside, but yet they, you knew that God could heal them? Would you help them and care and love them enough to get them up and get them in that house to be healed? I think so. So, I, I just know and from the bottom of my heart, that is the key. Uh, I know that's why this place is blessed. I know that's why we have what we have here. I know it is. Because, like I said, it doesn't matter what your past is. It doesn't matter what mistakes you've made. It doesn't matter what religion you might have used to have been or whatever. It's love. You know, you love people. Um, and, and that's the way you get through to them is, is love, just like God got through to us. Um, so basically, this is uh, old John. He was uh, the disciple that God loved. You know, that Jesus Christ loved. And... Uh, also, something else in the first, uh, probably up to the first two or three chapters in this, it also gives you without a shadow of a doubt to help you understand the Godhead, the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. A lot of people get real confused about how that actually works. But when you study this book of John in the first, like I said, three or four chapters, it nails it down. I mean, it explains it to you so that you can understand it. So, there's a twofold meaning in the lesson today, and, and first and foremost, it's going to be love. Um, so, we're going to pick it up in John chapter 1, verse 1. I can't help to say again before, uh, speaking of love, is before I get started, how excited I am about the uh, young folks that are getting married, and, and um, I feel just so honored that they have asked me to do their weddings and such and like I said man to see these kids grow up and I get to take part in that momentous occasion um, oh by the way I was going to let the young people know that are getting married and scheduled I do marriage counseling too uh, <laughs> 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 let me tell you something that, 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 that marriage thing that we did on that trip that's for everybody I mean that leave no shadow of a doubt how to have a successful marriage um so anyway, so John was the disciple that Christ loved. If you take John back into the Greek, it also means Yahweh's gift. Uh, Yahweh is God's sacred name. And John most definitely and certainly was a gift. Um, it always amazes me how God works because I know the last sermon I did, we talked about John the Baptist and how he leapt in the womb when he came into the presence of Jesus yeah. Christ. Amen. And that's going to touch on some of that again today. So here we are several weeks later talking about the same thing. Um, Christ utilized John in a, in a big way. I mean, he, he wrote the Gospel of John, he wrote the Epistles of John, and he even wrote the Book of Revelations. So he definitely was a disciple that Jesus Christ loved, and he uh, gave him a big responsibility and used him in a big way. Uh, uh, John presents Christ as God. And that's why I said that in this book, it will help you to understand the Godhead and the Trinity. Uh, so if you ever had any confusion concerning the Godhead, uh, he will definitely nail it down for you. But me saying that, I'll just say this about it. You know, the easiest way to explain that as far as I'm concerned is, is you've got the Father who is God, you've got Jesus Christ who is the Savior, and you've got the Holy Spirit of God. Um, you've got three different offices, but they all work together as one. You know, I always like to use myself as an example is I'm, I'm, I'm a boss, I'm a minister, I'm a husband. So I've got a different hat for each one of those categories, but yet it all works together as one. Amen. It's the simplest way to understand that. Um, all right, so y'all have heard me quote this verse many times over the years. In the beginning was the Word. Folks, the Word is Jesus Christ. Amen. Alright? In the beginning was the Word. Uh, you know, when you go to talking about the Old Testament and you're talking to people and you start talking about Christ and they'll say, well, He ain't even been born yet. Well, it's no different than what it was in Genesis when it says in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Well, in the beginning Jesus Christ was there. There you have the Godhead, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. 
He has always been with us, okay? And the Word was uh, with God. Jesus was with God, as well as the Holy Spirit. And if you read the book of Proverbs chapter 8, even wisdom was there from the beginning. And all wisdom comes from God. Alright? And the Word was God. So, uh, like I said, even in Genesis, in the beginning, His Word is the law. He is our comforter. He is our strength. He is our hope. He is our blessings. I mean, He is everything for us. Jesus Christ. Could you imagine facing a day of the things that you go through in your life and not have any hope? Not having anything to look for. Not knowing that, that, that you're going to be bailed out by God whenever you get tired of, of messing up and you repent of your sin. I mean, He is everything for us. And He died for us because He loved us. So, verse 2. The same was in the beginning with God. Again, in even my Bible references, Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. So the same, which is talking about the Word, which is Christ, uh, you see that Holy Spirit moving. Is that not what it did in the beginning in the book of Genesis? He created the heaven and the earth and the Holy Spirit was moving. Alright? Alright, verse 3. All things were made by Him. And without Him was not anything made that was made. He spoke and nothing became everything. What a fantastic thing that is, the capabilities and the power of our Father who is in heaven. Amen. You know, men can whittle out a lot of things in their lives, but everything that they use to make with their own hands, God supplies that material. Yes. Because He created it, didn't He? Alright, because without God, there is nothing. <clears throat> Verse 4. In Him was life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Folks, this is talking about eternal life. And Jesus Christ is the only way to eternal life. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. You know, I always tell people online, I say, hey, if you've got a dark spot in your life today, repent and fix it. Fix it. God's not going to do it all for you. Okay? God is the light and there is no darkness in Him. We all mess up. We all fall short. We all sin. We all have a past. But guess what? Get rid of it. Repent. Quit carrying it around with you. And come into the light. And we are also supposed to let the light shine through us. How do we do that? How can you let the light of God shine through you? We talk about it all the time. Small acts of kindness. I mean, you could do a small act of kindness to somebody and you would just be blown away at the effect that might have in somebody's life. You might lend an ear to somebody that's having a lot of problems and they're down on their luck and they just don't see no way out. And you give them that ear to listen to and you talk to them and counsel with them. Share Jesus Christ with them. Amen. Folks, there's so many things that we can do out of love that will bring people to Jesus Christ today. Um, I always like to say, I think it's in Matthew 5, 13, and it says, Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt have lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden underfoot. Are you salty enough to walk in a room and people see the light of God shining through you? You walk in the room and it brightens it up just a little bit. And you're wearing a smile on your face. And somebody else is going through a bad time and they're like, Why is that Jimmy Piggott always smiling? Why is he always saying good morning? See, because then they want some of that. They want to feel good. They want a better life. And that's what we have to do. It's like a beacon sitting on top of the mountain and it will attract those who are lost so that they can come out of the darkness and into the light. Do you love your brothers and sisters enough to get out of the world and be salty 
and let the light of God shine through you. Do you not want your brothers and sisters to have what you have? To have this church, to have this fellowship, to have this support in a non-judgment atmosphere. Man, I, there ain't nobody out there that wouldn't want this. Do you feel loved here? Amen. Can I get an amen? Amen. You can't help but to feel it. Now, when one part of that body is hurting, does not the rest of the body feel it? Yes, because we love each other and we support each other. And we've got to want that for those who are lost out in the world today. Because I'm going to tell you something, God can do things that we can't do. God can touch the hearts and the mind of somebody and change their life just like that. Snap of a finger. So we have got to be the light and let that light shine through us. Verse 5, And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. The light overcomes the darkness. Amen. Whether it be a candle, whether it be a flashlight, whether it be a lantern, when you walk into a pitch dark room, does it lighten it? Come on. That's what you're supposed to be doing. You are supposed to bring that light to the darkness with God working through you. John 3, 19. And this is the condemnation that light is coming to the world. And men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. See, the darkness can't do nothing about that light. <coughs> the darkness can't stop the light. Satan cannot stop God. The evil spirits and the demons and the devils cannot stop the Holy Spirit of God. They will lose. They may think they're gaining ground today, but they're not. They're not. You know why? Because we know how this book ends. I hope you know how the book ends. The light reveals lies. You know, a lot of people, when they go out and they do things and they're sleeking around in the darkness, they've done something and they don't want to have to handle or, or confront that situation. Do you not know that the truth always comes out? The light always comes forward. It might be a year, it might be a month, two weeks, a week, whenever. It might be five years. But the truth will come to light. Why? Because the light always defeats the darkness. Verse 6. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. Now, we're not talking about St. John. We're talking about John the Baptist here. Okay? So not to be confused. He didn't volunteer, did he? What did it say? There was a man sent from God. He didn't volunteer. God sent him uh, to this earth. So if you remember back in the story again, we go back to Elizabeth and Zacharias when John the Baptist was in the womb of his mother and Mary came to see her. And that baby John, he leapt in the womb at the presence of the Holy Spirit of God. He would be a cousin to Jesus Christ. Jeremiah 1 5, I knew ye before you were in the belly. God knows you. Amen. God knows you. He's got a purpose for you, He's got a plan for you. God, when He wants something done, He will send you to do it. He chooses people to bring forth that light into this world to help bring people into salvation and a relationship with Jesus Christ. Verse 7. The same came for a witness, and man was John a witness. I mean, he was baptizing down in the Jordan, and he was emptying out the church houses because of all the false doctrine and false teachings that were going on, and, and the people were going by droves from the church to go down there. Do you know why? Because He let that light shine through Him. Because He revealed the truth. Because He showed them love. We can do that same thing today with our brothers and sisters that are lost. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through Him might believe. <clears throat> 
So what was the purpose of that? What was John the Baptist's purpose? To bear witness. To bear witness of that one that would come. Jesus Christ. Verse 8. He was not that light. In other words, He was not Christ, but He sent to bear witness of that light, the Messiah. Again, He did not volunteer. God sent Him to prepare the way for Jesus Christ. When's the last time you bear witness to somebody? You know, that is exactly what we are supposed to be doing while we are here. God didn't put us here to take up space. He didn't put us here to breathe air. He put us here to bear witness Amen. to Jesus Christ. That is what we're supposed to be doing. He's given you a choice. You can follow that light or you can dwell in the darkness. I hope that, which I know everybody here is, is, is in the light, but we have got to bear witness to those out there that are lost. When's the last time you invited somebody to church? When's the last time you talked to somebody about Jesus Christ? I say to people all the time, if you want to get somebody talking, you'd be standing in the line at a grocery store and start a conversation with somebody. And before it's over with, you can end up witnessing to them. People are hurting, folks. They don't have that hope. And they're hurting. And they have nowhere to turn. So when you lend that ear, They'll tell you their life story standing in the line of Walmart. Amen. And you can bear witness for Jesus Christ in doing so. Verse 8. He was not that light, but He was sent to bear witness of that light. Verse 9. That was the true light which lighteneth every man that cometh into the world. Romans 10.13 says, For whosoever will call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. For whosoever no matter what you've done in your past, it don't matter to God. What matters to God is that you repent and you come into the light. <coughs> Verse 10. He was in the world, and the world was made by Him, and the world knew Him not. The, the Spirit moved upon the waters when God created the heavens and the earth. The Spirit moved upon the universe. And the men of earth would not receive Him. What did they do to Jesus Christ? They would not receive Him. They killed Him. You know why? Because He was hurting their prophets in the church. Verse 11. He came unto His own, and His own received Him not. His own folks, even Israel, part of Israel even turned their back on Him. Verse 12. But as many as received Him, to them gave He power to become the sons of God, even to them that believed upon His name. And His name in the Greek is Yahshua. That is His actual name. Okay? Yahweh Savior. When you believe in that power and you let it come into your life, it will guide you. It will help you to avoid the potholes and and that we have to come across in this world today. He is the light that lights the path Amen. for our feet in this journey, in this world today. Sons of God actually means ownership. You know what? I have people tell me all the time and I've talked to them about God and coming into a relationship with them. They say, well, one of these days, I'm going to get around to giving my soul to God. And I said, no, you're not. I said, what do you mean? I said, God owns your soul. God created your soul. You ain't going to get around to giving it to Him because He already owns it. Now, whether where that soul goes to heaven or hell, that's up to you. That's right. Ezekiel 18, 4 says, God, God says that all souls are mine. God can use you if you let Him. If you will let Him, He will use you. Volunteer. Pray about it. Ask Him what you can do. Tell Him to send somebody in your path and in your life today to witness to and watch how fast that happens. He's looking for volunteers. Are you up for the task? Are you plowing? You know, He is the, he is the potter and we are the clay. Are you plowing? That God can use you 
form you, mold you into something great in the eyes of God to do His work. You know, men may not accept us sometimes, but God will. Yes. God will. Verse 13. Which were born not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Are you praying for God's will in your life today? Yeah. I'm going to tell you something. That's one thing that I'm going to tell you. When you pray... Always, always pray for God's will to be done in your life. Amen. Because if it is not God's will, you don't want it. Amen. Now you can push your own agenda. You can be hard-headed and try to do it your way. Yep. And then when you get yourself in a mess and pull your head out of your dairy hair and repent and then let God's will be done in your life. Verse 14. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Remember verse 1, the Word was with God. Amen. He was made in the flesh. He's not asked you to do one thing that He did not do Himself. Did He suffer trials and tribulations? Was He persecuted? Was He beaten? Was He killed and hung on a cross? It's so hard sometimes. When we lose the people that we love in this life is one of the toughest things that we have to go through. But my question to you is, has God asked you to do anything that He did not do? He died in the flesh. And we are going to die in the flesh as well. But through the love, what did He do? He defeated death. Hallelujah. He showed you that you don't ever actually die. But you have eternal life through Jesus Christ. Man, what a beautiful thing. Can I get an amen? amen. Isaiah seven fourteen, Emmanuel, which means God with us. Jesus set an example for us being born in the flesh. John chapter 14 says, if you've seen the Father, you've seen the Son. Right. Leaving no doubt that God and Christ and the Holy Spirit are one. The Word became flesh, and that is why He is called the living Word. Verse 15. John bare witness of him and cried, saying, This was he whom I spake. He that overcometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. Now John the Baptist was born before Christ in the flesh, but yet it says that, he was, that Christ was before him. Why? Because he was there in the beginning. He's already been with us. He was, already, he was in the plan for us. Verse 16, And of His fullness have all we received the grace for grace. Do you know what grace is? Unmerited favor. Now what does that mean? You don't deserve it. I don't deserve it. We did nothing to deserve it. But because of what He did it? Because of love. Verse 17, For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Amen. Now Jesus Christ, He knew we couldn't keep all the laws. He knew that we was going to mess up, that we was going to fall short. But He fulfilled that with grace so that we could have forgiveness of sins and eternal life. Verse 18 to conclude, No man hath seen God at any time, the only begotten Son which is in the bosom of the Father, He hath declared Him. God did not ask you to do anything that He has not done Himself. Why can't we see God? We can't see Him because He's in a different dimension than we are. And as long as we are in the flesh, we will not see Him. But someday we will be with Him. Amen. And we will have eternal life. Hallelujah. Can I get an amen? amen. amen.